This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I have this buy once, cry once type mentality when it comes to all of my hobbies where I buy the best I can afford right at the beginning so that I don't have to deal with selling it later on. Which was exactly what happened when I first got into woodworking about six years ago. I got a bunch of tools at around the same time and just started building stuff for the house. And I never really made anything for the shop until I found it was absolutely necessary to do. Um, which caused my shop to always be in this very messy and disorganized state. Which is why I've been putting off doing one of these shop tours because I wanted to wait until everything's more organized. But hey, I figured it's been six years, not much have changed. And I'm actually pretty comfortable with the way things are set up right now. So might as well show you guys what it looks like. Um, just a little bit about this space. It is a two car garage that measures 20 feet in both directions with an 11 foot ceiling, which is really nice because it leaves me a lot of storage up top. Um, anyway, let's start with this garage door behind me. This is usually where I bring all of my material in from. And that's why I built this lumber storage right next to it. And this is based off of, I think one of Wood Whisperer's designs. So on the bottom here, it's got casters on one end and it's hinged up against the wall on the other end. So usually what I'll do after after I pull the truck up to the garage door is I'll unlock the casters and pull this guy out from the wall and start sliding the full sheets of plywood into the back here. And once everything's unloaded, I'll just roll this back up against the wall and lock the casters in place. There's also some space up here in the front for half sheets of plywood and then also some storage on the sides for storing smaller offcuts. Now for larger lumber pieces, they all go up here, which is just pretty standard lumber rack, which you've probably already seen on other shops. So they're just two by fours that are sandwiched between three quarter inch plywood and those are screwed into another long piece of 2x4 that's mounted directly to the studs in the wall. Uh, I don't have a lot of stuff on there right now because I just finished up a pretty big build but I have fully loaded this thing in the past and I have never had any issues as far as strength goes. It is really sturdy. Um, I also have my two cross cut sleds just leaning up against here. Um, it just makes a lot of sense because it's right next to the table saw but the reason why I have two cross cut sleds is that one is set up to run on the right side of the table saw to make angle cuts since my blade tilts to the left. And then the other sled is for running on the left side of the table saw for when I'm using dado blades. Um, so the table saw I'm using here is the 1.75 horsepower saw stop PCS with a 36 inch fence. And the reason why I got the 110 volt version was because at the time of purchasing this, my shop wasn't wired for 110 volts. Well, actually it still isn't, but it is definitely something that I plan to do in the future. It's just not a priority for me right now because the only time I've tripped this breaker on the saw is when I'm cutting eight quarter hard maple and trying to push it through as fast as possible. Um, usually when I'm cutting eight quarter material, I just try to go slow with it and everything's fine. But it is definitely something to consider. So if you're someone that cuts a lot of eight quarter material, I definitely recommend just bumping that up to three horsepower. It's definitely gonna work a lot better for you over the long run. Um, I did add a cabinet under here to take advantage of all this empty space under the saw, but in order for me to fit a pretty good sized cabinet here, I had to remove the legs. So to keep this table from tipping over when I have too much weight on here, I wedged a few pieces of wood between the cabinet and the tabletop, which works really well. Okay, so this cabinet holds pretty much everything I use over here at a table saw. So in this top drawer, I got some additional inserts, a thin blade riving knife, dado set brake cartridge, couple wrenches, my tools from miter gauge and crosscut sled, and this digital angle gauge. And then in this second one holds my push sticks, and this one is by far my favorite. This is a blaster push stick made by Darren over at Laser Lion Fab, and he makes some really awesome push sticks. Be sure to check them out. And this third drawer is for my micro jig gripper accessories. And then the fourth drawer are all my feather boards. And finally, this last drawer is just my miter gauge. And there's also a vertical drawer with shelves to hold all of my micro jig grippers. And guys, if you do any work at a table saw, I highly recommend getting these. Even if you already have a saw stop, these are still extremely helpful for cutting like small parts or thin parts, things like that. Um, and finally, my favorite part about this whole cabinet are these blade storage trays. So my 10 inch blades go up here. This is a thin curve blade and I am not sure what happened to this guy. Um, my dado blades and the chippers. I really like storing my blades this way. It's just really easy to see what I'm grabbing. 
So I also added this Wixie digital readout to my table saw, which <laughs> I absolutely love. Now I'm generally a referential measurement type of guy, and what that means is that I like to take multiple passes and sneak up on a cut until the joinery fits perfectly. So what I find this to be really useful for is when I'm just a hair shy of that perfect fit, I can look at this digital readout and know that I'm moving this fence over just one tenth of a millimeter. It really helps to prevent me from cutting away too much. Um, on top of this fence, I added this just some stock guide, which I don't use a whole lot. I mainly use it when I'm ripping really long pieces because those are the ones that tend to drift away from the fence. And this guy does a really good job at keeping the workpiece pressed down on the table as well as pulled into the side of the fence. Um, on the other side of this table saw is my workbench. And this is the only workbench in this entire shop. So I use it for pretty much everything. It works as an outfit table for my table saw. I use it for assembly. I use it for finishing. So the tabletop is pretty big. It measures 74 inches wide by 43 inches deep. And the base down here was based off of one of Johnny Brooks' designs, but instead of using the T-tracks that he did for his build, I went with a polk style top. Because originally I had this grand plan of using this as sort of a, like a festival MFT type of thing, which is why I cut all of these holes using this <laughs> UJK PARF guide system so that all these holes are perfectly at 90 degrees to one another. And it took me a really long time to get these cut, like three hours or something. And the funny story is, I never ended up using this workbench that way, so <laughs> it was kind of a waste of time. Um, now, I don't regret building this style of a workbench because I do think the holes provide me with more clamping options than if I had gone with the T-Track style. It's just that I didn't need the holes to be all perfectly aligned like that. Um, Anyway, so even though the base is shorter than Johnny's build because my top is much taller than his, it can still manage to fit four Festool sustainers on the sides as well as plenty of drawer space up front. So everything along the left here are for all my fasteners. I've got brad nails here. Next one's for screws and bolts. And then third drawer is more screws and bolts. I know everything's really messy in here, but hey, the point is I know exactly where everything is. And then this fourth drawer is a sustainer with my dominoes. And I've got some layout stuff on the right side here, so <laughs> lots and lots of Pika marker inserts. Um, in this next one, I've got some clamps, bench cookies, and my jigs. All right, in this third drawer, I've got a couple hand planes in here and then some more jigs and some more jigs. And since I do all of my glue ups and assembly on this table as well, I've got all of my clamps hanging on these wall control panels right next to it. So I've got some 24 inch, 40 inch, and 50 inch Bessie parallel clamps. And what I really like about those is that we can use these to connect two of them together to make them longer. So since most of the larger stuff I build are no more than 90 inches long, what I have here can handle most of that. And then for smaller glue ups though, I prefer to use these bar clamps from Rocker because these are just so much lighter and easier to handle compared to those Betsy clamps. Um, and if you've seen any of my past build videos, you know I love to use these micro jig dovetail clamps for holding down work pieces on the tabletop when I'm breaking them down with a track saw, for cutting dados, for sanding, for glue ups, or pretty much anything that you can think of. And I especially love the ones that have this little spring on the end to keep the top from sliding down. It's just one of those little features that really make these stand out. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to have have this wall of clamps right here next to the assembly table, so I'm not running around looking for a new clamp in the middle of a glue up. Um, oh, so whenever I'm doing any kind of cutting or sanding on this workbench, all those tools are usually connected to this dust extractor that sits in this general area. So this is the Festool CT26, and all I can say is that it works great. It's really quiet compared to my other shop vac, and it's got a HEPA filter inside, so if you're someone who have allergies or if you're sensitive to dust, I highly recommend getting one of these. Now one of the downsides to this guy is, well I guess it's true for all Festool stuff, is that these bags are fairly expensive. So eventually I'm probably just going to get a cyclone separator. Now for all of my larger tools in the shop, they're all connected to this Oneida Mini Gorilla. This dust collector has a one and a half horsepower motor and you can see it's got wheels on the bottom because this is a mobile dust collector. So it's designed to be connected using a flex hose and then you can roll this guy around the shop and swap it between tools. So it's definitely not ideal for workflow 
efficiency, but for what I do, it works great because I'm usually focused on just one single project. I'm not switching between tools as often as uh, someone who builds furniture to sell, who's always working on a bunch of different projects and each project is at a different stage in the process. But to make things a little bit easier for me, I do have this thing hooked up to this expandable hose from Rockler with a quick connect on the end. And then all of the tools have Rockler's quick connect ports on them. So it's really easy to plug and unplug and swap between different tools. So what's great about this is that it can expand up to 28 feet long. So I can reach any of these tools across my shop without having to drag the dust collector over. And once I'm done with it, I just bring it back and it'll retract back to a smaller size. So I don't end up with this big thing just laying out in the middle of my shop. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the setup. If there's one negative thing I have to say about it, it would be the size of the drum. It's only 22 gallons, so it's definitely on the small side. If I'm milling something that day, I can probably fill this guy up in like an hour or two. And next to the dust collector is my planer. This is the DeWalt DW734. It's a pretty basic beginner type planer. I got it as soon as I started woodworking and it's worked really well for me over the past six years. I never had any issues with it. So if you're looking to get your very first planer, you're not gonna go wrong with this. But if you have the budget, I do recommend just going up to the DW735. Sometimes I really wish I had that extra half inch capacity. Um, I built this cabinet that's sitting on not too long ago. It's basically just this steel frame that I got from Rockler and then I just filled it up with plywood. Um, and of course it's mobile, so I can push it up against the wall when I'm not using it. Now since I only have this one workbench, these cubbies on the side kind of acts as a lumber storage for when I'm milling in case I don't have any room left on the workbench. In this first drawer, I've got a bunch of drawer slides and hinges. Let's see, second drawer, um, a bunch of finishing supplies. Some router stuff in this third one and bandy clamps. Lots and lots of bandy clamps and a trash bag. And next to the planer is my jointer. This is the Jet 6 inch helical head with a long bed. And of course I got the mobile base so I can move it around. Um, not much to say about it, it works really well. Um, only thing is that it's kind of pricey, but hey, it's got all the bells and whistles that I will want with a jointer. So on top here is my tool wall, and this is as much a tool wall as it is a backdrop for all my videos. The majority of the stuff that you see on here are squares and straight edges that I use for layout. Um, just so you guys know, I did buy some of these, but most of them were gifted to me by woodpeckers. So no, nobody needs this many squares and rulers for layout. But if you were to ask me which ones I recommend, then I would definitely say the Paulini pocket rule. Just get the whole set in stainless steel. And the same goes with the squares. Just get the stainless steel ones. So the ones I use most is the 642 and the 1282 and the reason why I like these is because the stainless steel blade is much thinner so we can get the scale much closer to the work surface and also it has notches cut into the blade so we can make really precise layout lines with it and if you do a lot of case glue ups I highly recommend getting these aluminum clamping squares these are really strong but they're a lot less bulky than the plastic or wood ones that you can get for cheaper I've got a few tools over here on the left. There's a palm router, a drill guide, my pocket hole jig, and a couple of these circle jigs. And then on the right side here, I've got my Festool stuff. So I got my sander, my domino, a router, and a track saw. And of course, I got a couple tracks hanging on the ends here. Um, so I know that Festool is pretty expensive and there are definitely companies out there that make cheaper tools that do pretty much the same thing. But the reason why I like Festool is for the dust collection and the ecosystem. Like say for this router, it doesn't do anything that other routers can't do, but it does come with all sorts of accessories to help keep the dust contained when we're using it. And also it works together with the tracks that come with the track saw. So just those two reasons is enough for me to choose this one over other routers. Um, okay, so over here in this corner is my drill press. This is the Grizzly G7943 14 inch drill press. I added this woodpecker drill press table to it that comes with this fence. It's got a couple clamps and it's also got these stops on it. And this is really easy to make repetitive or symmetrical holes. So for what I do, this setup has been really great. I'm really happy with it. So this is the cabinet I built for it. And at first glance, a lot of people think that this is a floor standing drill press, but it's actually 
a benchtop drill press that's sitting underneath the top of this cabinet. And I made it this way because I wanted to still be able to have some surface area here that I can put stuff on because usually with benchtop drill presses, once the base is on the tabletop, there's really nothing that you can put on the surface anymore. Um, really nothing special in the drawers. Um, I got some Allen wrenches. Um, this thing's really cool. I use this more than the drill press itself. Um, next, got some Forstner bits and wrenches. And there's also a vertical drawer on the side to hold some larger jigs that I didn't really have anywhere else to put. All right, and over here is my router table. And I bought all of this from Rockler except for the router that's inside. So the one I have in here is the Bosch 1617, which also happened to be the very first router I ever got. Right now, this whole thing's just a frame. So I definitely have plans to fill this space up with some storage in the future because I desperately need some additional storage for all the tools and bits I use here at the router table. Um, up here is a cabinet I built a few years back. I've got all my drills and drivers stored down here. And there's some connectors over here for storing air tools. And then on the inside, I've got some additional tool storage. So I've got some of these long ones hanging on the shelf and then these bulkier tools just sitting on the bottom. And this cabinet also works as a charging station for my tools. So I've got my Ryobi and Milwaukee chargers mounted in here. Up here, I've got some drill and driver bits, uh, more drill bits, my box of pocket screws, I've got stains on the top shelf and some finishing stuff on the doors and spray paint. Um, so overall, very useful cabinet to have in the shop. I just wish that I had made it bigger. Over here is a new laser that I just added to the shop a couple months ago. This is the D1 Pro that X-Tool sent me. And I'm a total noob when it comes to lasers. This was my first one, so I was really surprised how powerful this 20 watt laser was. Apparently it can cut through 10 millimeters of plywood or eight millimeter cherry hardwood in a single pass, which is totally nuts. Um, I haven't had a chance to use this a whole lot yet. The only thing I made with this were the uh, storage bins for the filing cabinet I built a few months back. So I cannot wait to make more stuff with this. But the first thing I gotta do is make a cabinet for this because right now it's just sitting on this folding sawhorse and I've got all these accessories that have nowhere to go. So I definitely need to come up with a solution for this. And last but not least, my favorite tool in the shop, the CNC. This is a Onefinity X50 woodworker and it is a huge upgrade to the X-Carve that used to sit here because this guy is screw driven on all the axes, which is much more accurate and repeatable than the belt drive that was on the X-Carve that I had. So there was never an instance where something slipped or something got caught and completely messed up the job. Um, also, earlier this year, I upgraded the router to this 1.5 kilowatt air-cooled spindle from Poon CNC. And the main reason I made this upgrade was so I can run larger bits with my projects and also because I can do much longer carves with this than a router would be able to. Um, so I have this Nighthawk dust boot on here. It works really great, but what I really love about this is that this part clamps directly to the spindle and the top and the bottom comes off really easily because they're just attached using magnets. And this is really important for me as a content creator because I need to be able to film the tool cutting the material from all different angles without anything blocking it. And then when I'm done with it, I can just throw these right back on there. It's really easy and it's a lot quicker than any of the other dust boots I've tried on the market. So if you're a content creator or if you just happen to be in the market for a good dust boot, I highly recommend this. And I have a full build video for this workbench that I'm sitting on right now. It is the perfect size for the CNC. Um, so in this first drawer, I need to make a new organizer for this because I got a bunch of new clamps after I got the CNC. So all of this is just kind of thrown together and it's, it's a total mess. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna make a new video once I figure this out. And the rest of these drawers are just like random junk that I don't really know where else to put. So I've got a laser, I've got a CNC, and now I just need a 3D printer in the shop. I, mean, I just love being able to combine modern technology with woodworking. It just opens up so many doors. Another great place to learn more about modern technology and how they work is on Brilliant, who's the sponsor of today's video. So if you guys don't know, Brilliant is an awesome online platform for learning anything related to math, science, and computer science in a very fun and interactive way. So instead of going to lectures and listening to a professor drone on and 
on about subject, Brilliant helps you to learn by basing off of real life examples. So they normally start off by giving you an overview of a subject, then show you some animations and videos, and then later ask you a question that puts everything into perspective and really help you to understand that subject on a more fundamental level. So currently I'm working through all of the physics courses, but I just noticed that they added some courses on thinking in code and how technology works, which really caught my attention. So I'm probably gonna start working my way through that. So yeah, if you're at all interested to learn more about how technology works, head over to brilliant.org forward slash beverage creations to start your 30 day free trial. And then you can try out their courses, take some quizzes and see how you like it. And if you do end up loving it, the first 200 people that use my link in the descriptions will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And yeah, that is the end of my shop tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And fun fact, I actually got some ideas on what else I need to add to this shop. And I hope I did the same thing for you too. I'm gonna have links in the descriptions for all the tools I talked about today and some discount codes as well in case that you guys wanna get some of this stuff. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.